Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to IHWE Radio. Before we get started tonight, we would like to take a moment to honor the memory of certain individuals. Yesterday was the anniversary of the passing of two performers that are known the world over. Terry Von Erich, who was the most naturally gifted performer the, this state had ever seen, and Hot Stephanie Gilbert, who was ahead of his time, as many people have said. The anniversary of their passing was yesterday. Also, last night, the wrestling world lost a big man when Nelson Frazier, who wrestled over the years as Mabel, Viscera, and Big Daddy D, passed away at the age of 43. At this time, we would like to honor the memory of those competitors by taking a moment of silence right now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IHWE Radio. My name is Michael McCurdy. I am the host of this show as well as the author and creator of Encyclopedia WCCW. Joining me tonight, as always, is my co-host, David Fuller. David, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing all right. This is an awesome show we got tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be great. Historic is the word. Historic doesn't even begin to touch the show we have tonight, and I'm excited to get our guest on here tonight. He's already live in our studio. Ladies and gentlemen, this man, his name is synonymous not just with Texas wrestling, but with the world of wrestling in general. When you look up the families of wrestling, his name is one of the top. When you look at the all-time greatest rivalries in professional wrestling, his name versus the Freebirds, one of the top feuds ever, still considered one of the greatest rivalries of all time. I'm sure by now you all know who our guest is tonight. I would like to welcome to IHWE Radio, Kevin Von Erich. Kevin, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, David. It's great to be here. I appreciate it. I, I was, uh, uh, those are some great guys you talked about, and I didn't didn't know about the last fellow. That's a friend of Marshall's, too, and that's, uh, I've got, you're on the speakerphone, I've got him sitting right here. He didn't know that. That was a pretty good jolt, darn it. I hate to hear that. What a nice guy he was. Yeah, Nelson Frazier passed away last evening, it was reported. Um, it's been coming out over the Internet and all that uh, last night and this morning. Uh, I believe the death was a result of a heart attack. He just turned 43 just a couple days ago, I believe. Darn it. Well, that's that's sure sad to hear, dang it. Uh, God bless his family. You know, I hope they, uh, you know, strengthen to go through all this. You know, it's tough, tough to lose somebody, especially... You know, if your friends come over and all that, and you bring food and all, but when pretty soon they stop coming, and that's when it you know sinks in that it's real. So, you know, think about those folks; they're gonna be suffering. You know, and darn it, it's the way life is. You know, yeah, definitely. Well, I talked to his family. He was a very talented big man. Uh, he, you know, he he uh, he was good at what he did, being a big, just a big man, and uh, I always heard good things about him. So. It's always sad to hear when uh, someone he grew up watching passed away. So, uh, yeah, thoughts out to his family, his friends, his colleagues uh, tonight. No, I didn't know him, but both my boys uh, did, and they uh, say it was just a hell of a guy. So, uh, right, and that's just too bad, Bernard. That's just how it is. Definitely, definitely. <clears throat> well, so what else? Before I, I don't want to. I got you all bummed out. No, let's. let's Oh well, no 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 on? no, Mike, uh, Michael, do you uh, do you want to start out with a question or do you want to take a caller? Um, yes, actually, I want to start off a little bit of a question here to get the ball rolling. Um, Kevin, as I said in the intro, your family name is synonymous not just with Texas wrestling, but with wrestling all over the world. Your father, Fritz von Erich, one of the toughest individuals ever to step into that ring. Your brother, David Terry. You all were gifted athletes. What I'd like to know and start off this interview is, what was it like to be a Von Eric? What was it like to be a member of that family, to have just to be, to have the father you had and just to have the success? 
What was well, that? you know, to me, it was just, uh, I don't have anything to hold it up against. I just, to me, it was just completely normal. You know, my dad, I know he would come home after wrestling Gene Kaniski and Bobo Brazil and some of these uh, uh, really top Johnny Valentine, Duke Yamuka, some of these names. Uh, he'd come up with, come home with this, be all marked up, and you can tell he'd just been through a, you know, a, 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 through war. And uh, these guys just beat the, you know, beat the heck out of each other. And uh, those were known as the great matches. And that's the way we were brought up in Texas, to be solid and snug. And, and that is the way we worked. And I think and people do like that style. And uh, and as far as growing up in the family, that was that was just all we knew was wrestling. You know, our dad was just great to us. And, of course, the people booed him. And so we knew when they were cheering, then uh, the guy was winning. And we wouldn't even look. We couldn't stand it. You know, you're little kids. You love your dad. But when we, we heard him booing, then we knew things were going our way. Then we were happy and we were watching. <laughs> awesome. That is that is fantastic. Uh, Kevin, uh, you know, you've you made several trips overseas over the years. You've talked about it in, in, in a lot of different interviews. And, and, you know, for a lot of wrestling fans, uh, you know, they here in the States, they may see some footage of some overseas wrestling. But to be there is a completely different thing. Uh, let's talk about Japan. Uh, there's so many differences in Japan with the way they view this business, or this sport. Uh, they consider the wrestlers warriors, and you know the, the matches were contests between warriors. Describe what it was like to go over to Japan and perform in front of those fans. Well, you know, it's um, when we first started, Japan was, uh, you know, we we really took it out on them. We we. You know, we were the highest paid American wrestlers in Japan, and uh, and we earned it. We got in the ring, and we worked hard. And so they put young athletes in the ring with us, some really good names, and uh, started some real legacies over there. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're going 110% over there, you know. I mean, we're not hitting the nose, the teeth, or the uh, low stuff, you know, but we're fighting everywhere else, you know. it's a, We're, we're going at it. And... Uh, and so I was, you know, came back and I figured, well, these guys, and me, that guy, no, no, we get him, you know, get him, I'll get that guy, and, you know, you know, you're, in your mind, this guy's an enemy, that guy, you know, I, I want to prove something to him, you know, kind of how you think in our business, and you see such respect over there. They, these people hold him in such high regard. You think, my gosh, they look at wrestlers a lot different than they they do, and they're athletes differently than they do in in America. They they really. We're revered over there. I, I love it that they just uh, they they understand that's what we go through, and that the fact that you entertain them, they just love you for it, and have got an appreciation that I, I touch well, I, it. and the way that they're that way with my sons too. You know, you think uh, uh, sometimes they'll be fine, but Okay, go ahead, Tim. We have some interference in the background. I'm sorry. We have some interference. Keep going. Yeah, Ross and Marshall wrestling in Noah. Tell us about that. Yeah, they're wrestling out there in uh, in Japan, and they've been, uh, you know, they, they we didn't uh, they didn't ask any favors at all. We don't, and I'm not the, I'm not a well connected guy with um, today's wrestling anyway. I mean, I don't know any promoters or anything like that. I've got, uh, you know, you know, I put I pretty much turned the page on wrestling. I came. I was going to melt away into the jungle and just forget it ever happened. To tell the truth, I came out here into the into the tropics and have never been happier. But I, my boys, I wanted to raise good, healthy athletes, and they are. Uh, they also play semi-pro football to stay in shape for wrestling, but which is pretty competitive out here. We got a lot of NFL guys and all, and my boys are good athletes, good football players, and so they're doing that too. But. Uh, Japan was kind of the uh, the thing. They're wrestling over there. They've made a great name for themselves. They've got a fan base, and I'm real proud of them there. But it is different than uh, American wrestling for sure. It's a lot of leg diving and a lot of uh, uh, choke outs and a um, lot of uh, submissions and uh, you know, like kind of like the old Soviet Union. I don't know if it, back in the in the 70s and 80s, Russia was like that too, and the Soviet Union was like that. You're in professional wrestling, so, so, uh, and, and a lot of other places too. India was like that in some spots, and I traveled a whole lot, and uh, and was, I've seen South African, uh, Indian style, and South African style is a lot of legs all below the waist stuff, and then uh, you, they call a catch as catch can style in the Middle East, 
and uh, where it's throws above the waist. It's a Roman Greco style wrestling, and it's good to go around the world and pick up all these different types. And that's what my sons are doing. Is just um, you want to have your rep- your quiver to be full of um, you know ammunition of holes to go to. They should come to you like um, like um, um, nor- naturally, just come to you just. Uh, uh, normally, and they, they are. My boys are just, uh, they're naturals in the ring, so couldn't be more be more proud of them to tell the truth. Uh, I really am. Okay, it looks like we have a caller on the line. Uh, area code 479. You're on live with Kevin Von Eric. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> How Hello there. You? How are you today? I am fantastic getting to talk to you. That's always a pleasure for me. Well, good. Um, what's, what's your name? Uh, you know my name. You gave me my name. It's Claudia. Oh, oh well, hello, Claudia. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't recognize your voice. I know it. I know. Well, that's because we usually talk on Twitter, so you don't get to hear me very often. That's right. I talk to you on Twitter. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Try to put the sunrise. Um, I've had a beautiful sunrise this morning, by the way. I know it. I actually uh, was just thinking I can't wait to see the pictures from the new place. I'm so happy for you guys. I know that that is something that you've wanted to do for a long time, to have all your family right there on the same property. Um, Just such a huge blessing. I'm so glad that went through for you guys. I know you've been in love with that waterfall for about two years, and uh, so I'm I'm glad that you're going to get to play in that thing now. Oh, it'll be great. Yeah, all the kids will all be together and uh, farming. And, you know, we garden, we hunt and fish out here. And so that's going to be great. We're really looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, and doesn't Ross has like a, a nut in business, right? He does nuts or something he did, like that, he, doesn't Ross he? Ross supply nuts to all the health food stores out here, the macadamia nuts. But uh, he's Ross is kind of like that. He also uh, invests, you know, he's Under Armour and he's got some other companies. Uh, Chipotle's and all. He's a he's pretty good with uh, with ta- kind of a tape market trader. But uh, that's awesome. It sounds like he well, sounds like he takes after his grandfather in that. Dad well, he's a smart kid. They both are. Both of us. But but they, I, I'm proud of them. They do they do give their best. Let me tell you with Twitter though. I, I'm not really a computer guy. And Facebook, I, I would if it had not been for this movie and and thing coming <laughs> I out, I would. I even, know. You're so brave to even try it. I Twitter laugh. is like I can use that hand phone, you know, this the cell phone and do it, but I'm not going to hunch over a computer like that. It's just, you know, I try to get all that stuff finished by 9 o'clock in the morning so I don't touch a computer again unless, you know, I uh, just happen to be be there because, you know, it's, sure. 9 o'clock here is like you guys are into noon. So, so I pretty much like to get done by then and, you know, don't spend all your day behind a dead burn. Computer. <laughs> exactly. Um, I do have a question, but before I get to that, I got to blow a little smoke because, um, you know, I've been checking out these interviews and it's so funny. The other day, um, somebody made a comment on Facebook about, you know, I love those Von Erics, but if they would have been just a little more cocky, man, they could have just made millions. And I commented back, I said, you know, to be honest, I'm glad they weren't. That that's what endeared them to us is that you guys weren't cocky, that you were humble and kind and considerate and courteous and approachable and all these years later you're still that same guy. You're still humble. You you know, you follow the Lord more and more every day and that's evident in everything you do and say. I, I see people, you know, who they ask you questions about people who may have written a book or two that didn't have the nicest thing to say, and you always, always have something good to say about that individual. You never say anything bad about people, you know, at least not publicly that I have ever seen. And, <laughs> you know, you. It's, I, so I you. just really have to say you you just <laughs> really – it's why we love you guys is because – you're exactly that way. You're kind well, and and we approachable, want to and we adore like that. Big shots, you know, and and that cocky thing, you know. I, I really never did. 
I know they, they, the people call me Big Brother on that Twitter. As <laughs> I told them a long time ago, I saw myself as a Big Brother figure instead of like a sexy kind of a, I don't have any use for a sexy man, you know. I mean, that's yes, just yes. A, a oxymoron, yeah. if you ask me. I mean, uh, pr- girls are pretty, you know, and, and all that. Men, we have a job to do, and, and that's, I didn't like all that pretty boy stuff. I, I you know, I don't, Look at me like I'm your your big brother or like your son yeah. or your nephew or whatever. But you know, mm-hmm. not, uh, we none of us were in with that sexy stuff. You know, uh, I mean, I know Kerry did kind of shake his butt a little. Bit, and the people <laughs> he was would something of a ham. We're gonna to have face. to say that straight up. He was a ham. He yeah, liked he was. attention. Um, but so you know, VE Nation sends their love. I did get a couple of people who asked specifically that I said hello. Um, Jose, Sergeant at Arms, is working, uh, doing his thing, holding down the fort, and he wanted to say hi. And Ann from Twitter, and Amy, and Tina, and there's so many I'm going to forget somebody. But my question is, what would you like to say to them? You know, if you had oh, such sweet. To say, you know, I, I I feel so good about uh, our fans are so loyal, and I'm so grateful for that. They're good people. I mean. Not just the fact that they wanted to see the good guy beat the bad guy. That's just something about them inside. I mean, I mean, but also they. If you will look, the people that are on follow on Twitter, they're they're concerned with each other. They help each other. They uh, they're positive. Absolutely. Yeah, and prayers decent. for each other yeah. and and stuff like that. Encouraging. Not totally. Just, That's why I love it. That's why I, I love it. It's totally. I totally know okay. what you're saying. Well, either way, one way or another, and. So, you know, everyone's had bad things happen in their life, you know, but you can either have them turn you right or left, you know. I mean, it's mm-hmm. I, I felt like, you know, all was lost before. I spent a lot of time on my knees searching for answers, and you all know about mine, but there are other people that have had it worse than me. It's just they weren't public. But, uh, hey, I, I always wanted to be to be able to say with uh, uh, loudly and proud that, I'll take the good with the bad. I, I have had a, a beautiful life, and I'm so grateful to be able, been able mm-hmm. to spend it with such Great brothers. And, and then to have my life to take this more beautiful turn with so many grandchildren and, and kids. I know, but they're all adorable. We just love each <laughs> other, too. And, it, and thank you for saying that. They just... They they are just it's just uh, I couldn't be happier. It's just um, great out here. You can see it in your face. There's a picture of you with the twins. And I don't and I don't know if it's if it's Easter or Halloween because they're dressed up, but they're dressed up in a way that it could have been Easter too. The look on your face, you're looking down at them, they're looking up at you, and the look on your face, it's like that's what the Lord was talking about about bliss and peace and happiness was the look on your face, looking at those babies. You know, that's so true. People think that happiness is with. Uh, you know, wealth or with you know oh, yeah, fame or whatever. But it's so wrong. Happiness is who's who's the who's the who smiles the most. Who is mm-hmm. the happiest guy? That's the rich guy, not the guy that hides behind the stack of coins and says, "Look at this." You know, and you never pile them high enough. The happy no. the and you can't take it with breaks. you when you go. <laughs> no. Well, I am taking up way too much of your time because I get to talk to you anytime I want. And so I'm going to let other people call in. Just peace and love to you, brother. My affections to everybody. Tell everybody I said hey. And uh, I will be visiting with you again sometime. Well, give my best to all those Twitter folk, and those are some great, great people. I'm sure glad that, to have you guys, and uh, and I'll have you some pretty pictures soon. <laughs> I'll talk oh, to you later hey, then. The pleasure is all ours, all ours. Never in your ever doubt that for a second. We are the well, ones who benefit more here. Claudia, thank you. Claudia, thank you so much for and thank you so thank much for you. doing thank all that you, you do to promote me. this. Hey, and thank, thank you, you for letting me talk Great. so long. I appreciate that. Not a problem. Have all a good right. one, Claudia. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Love the show. Thanks again. Yes, ma'am. All right, Michael. I all believe right. you have another call for us. Yes, we do. We have a caller. Area code two five four five eight two. Are you there? Area code 254, yes, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're all live with Kevin on air. Yeah, how are you doing? This is hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. How are you, buddy? Uh, Kevin. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is James. Kevin, I've been a fan for yours for um, over 
over 30 years. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it, James. Thanks, buddy. I'm the age of Carrie, okay, so that give you an idea of how old I was. I am. And I was a fan of your dad before I was ever a fan of you guys. But, dude, you brought us so much happiness and so much joy, I can't tell you how much. I spent hours <laughs> watching you on television, and I was there live at a lot of your matches, and uh, you made Texas proud. Very proud. Uh, that's a good feeling. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Right. Say that. We sure enjoyed it. I want to tell you a story one time. I was at a live match one night where you guys had a tag team match against the Freebirds, and Freebirds ended up winning the match, of course, for their very usual dirty way. But after the the uh, after that thing had closed and they, they shut the sportatorium down, uh, you guys probably wasn't aware of it. There was a group of local bikers standing outside the dressing room door waiting for the flea birds to come out. And they were beating on the door. They were so angry because the flea birds had beat you. They were going to drag them out of there and beat the tar out of them. And it was funny because you could see Michael Hayes uh, peeking out through the window. But there was no way they were coming outside of that dressing room. Really? So I never heard of that. That's all oh, I yeah, got. It into... happened. I hope it Gordy happened. wasn't I was there. there. It would have been great if Gordy wasn't there. <laughs> yes, that was Gordy, because it was a six-man tag team match. They were all there. And Gordy and, was something uh, else. Take a lot of good do you, have, do you have a question, uh, 254? Do you have a question for Kevin? Well, no, I just want to tell him I'm going to appreciate him, and uh, I'm sorry about all your brothers, man. I wish that uh, we had them still to this day, because you guys were the greatest thing that ever happened to wrestling in Texas. But I, I just so, want to say that you the reason wrestling is the way it is today. There wouldn't have been no WWE, WWF without the uh, Von Erichs, especially you, because you were the high flying and most talented one in the group. And Thank you, man. I, it's, uh, I appreciate it. You know, it's uh, you can't make decisions for people, but uh, but I I don't have any uh, complaints at all. I had a great time, and you know, while I was there, and uh, and I couldn't be more blessed. I mean, I, I've you know my. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, I, it, there was that stereotype from that movie, that the wrestler movie that came out. I, it yeah, was that WrestleMania with that guy that played in that part, that uh, Mickey uh, Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Mickey yeah. Rourke. Yeah, and and I tell you, I, 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 I'd hate to think that that's the way it really is. I don't think there are any guys out there that are that way. I, I just that was a terrible movie. I'd sure like for people to know that that is not the way it is. So, I mean. There are some really good men in wrestling. Guys, I really miss uh, Kamala, and just uh, and on and on. There's so many, uh, so many good men. Darn it! I, I hate to hear that. You know, uh, <laughs> some guys are down on their luck like they are. You know, there are 26 wrestling operations at one time, and with the only one now, there are a lot of good men that you know didn't have any place to perform their craft. It was, uh, it was too bad, but. Uh, Sure, feel sorry for those guys, but uh, but they're you know, and I know they're sore and hurting and all that, but it's not as bad as that darn movie was. I'll say that. <laughs> well, I, want, I do want to ask you one question. You mentioned Kamala. Who who was your favorite wrestler? Who was your favorite uh, adversary or opponent? Well, uh, Kamala was a great athlete, and uh, and uh, uh, he was a lot of fun too. Junkyard Dog was a good friend of ours too, and. Uh, Bruiser Brody was a always a good friend. Uh, uh, Who was your favorite on, on. Big John your favorite Stud. bad guy? Big John Studd was a real good buddy. Uh, um, Terry Gordy was a good friend. Uh, um, Al Perez and I could go on. Brian Blair. Uh, your I could, favorite bad guy? Uh, you're talking about my favorite. Somebody that I yes. thought was a really tough bad guy or a guy that I liked as a friend or like what do you mean who do you like to wrestle the most I mean who you got the most um, I guess he was your strongest adversary who you really like to get into it with well I liked in Japan I liked wrestling Fujinami and uh, some of those wrestlers and, uh, and uh, gosh uh, what's that guy's name Musa Musa Marshall, Marshall what's Greg that guy's name hello, hello? Yeah, well, there's some great athletes over there, and those guys go 100, went 110, and uh, it's oh, yeah. a good wake up in the morning sore, you know. You, know, you did your best. <laughs> Terry Gordy is one of my favorite wrestlers to heckle. I never could get a response out of him, him and King Kong Bundy. 
But I used to heckle uh, Gordy so bad, and he wouldn't even pay me no attention, none. I well, you weren't pulling out the place, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I All right, James. Uh, James, I yes. appreciate you calling in. We're gonna we're gonna get some other callers in to talk with Kevin, but we greatly no appreciate you calling, and you have a wonderful night. Thank you for listening. You're about so long, James. Kevin, I look forward to seeing you again, man. I look forward to following you on Twitter, whatever I can do. I just found BE Nation. But uh, I'm gonna enjoy be a fan talking to you. Good. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. All right, we have a. All right, let's go to our next caller. I believe we have someone from the three six one area code. You're on live with Kevin Bon Eric. Hello there. Yes. Hello. Three six one. Are you there? Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, let me see here. Okay, I believe let's move we on. Got a, and I got it up here. We've got the okay. 208 area code. Two o- you're live area code 208. Bon you're on live with Kevin Bon Eric. Hello there. How Hello, are you doing? Guys. Hello, guys. This is Brian Westcott from Idaho. Hello, Kevin. Nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you, Brian. How are you, bud? Not bad. Idaho, it was great. Huh? great. It was great getting to meet you back in April 2012 at the Cauliflower Alley Club. Oh, yeah, really? Down there in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. Yep, I'm also uh, helping out Michael McCurdy with the Encyclopedia WCCW project. Oh, are you? Well, congratulations. You guys have done a lot of good stuff. I, I sure enjoy looking at those pictures. To me, it's just like a family album, you know. I sure do like seeing those. I don't know how you guys do find all those pictures, but I, I sure like seeing them. Oh, yeah, it's been uh, great getting to work with you. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, a little shout out to David Fuller. I'm already working on your other project, and you can already scratch Gorgeous Gary Young off your list. He's not on any pay per views at all. But I'm okay, finishing you got a, you, you, Okay, that's great. Do you got Do you got a question for Kevin? I think. Uh, well, one uh, interesting uh, thing. Um, what Kevin? What are your thoughts about the Cauliflower Alley Club, and uh, what were your impressions of it when you visited there? Uh, you know, it's hard to say, really, because I was I was there to uh, really the uh, I went there to get my son's wrestling license for uh, Missouri and Kansas, and I they were uh, I was going to have him go up and uh, be trained in Harley Race's school, and so since I was in town, then you know I let some guys talk me into going down there. I'm not a Vegas type guy, you know, really. But I did go down there with them, and uh, but it was because I was getting the wrestling license for the boys down there, and uh, I was with them, and I also, um, you know, trained some wrestlers there in Harley School. It's just kind of a favor, kind of like you know, like he did me a favor, you know. And Harley's a great mm-hmm. champion, a great man. Oh, that's great. Yeah, definitely. We would love to have you come back and this year. They're honoring Terry Taylor. They're honoring Michael Hayes, which will be really good. So uh, uh, whenever you get a chance, again, yeah, you're definitely love to have you back at the Cauliflower Alley Club. Well, yeah, I talked to Terry Taylor just a while back, and and they're both old friends, so I hope they, they're both doing well. All right, Brian. Well, thank you so much for calling. It's always a pleasure. If you want to hang on and listen, that's cool. We're going to get to some more callers. But thank you so much, Brian. Yeah, Brian. You're welcome. Okay. Anytime. All right. Uh, I believe we have an 817 number, which is from my neck of the woods, a Fort Worth 817. Are you on? Me? <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Well, You're on uh, with Kevin Bon Eric. Hi, yeah, Kevin. I know that area code. That, yeah, but we're girls. <laughs> um, yeah, that was my area code when I was a little kid. <laughs> That's my well, area code now. That's where I live. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm most good friends with Buddy Meyer. You probably know him. Sure do. And um, anyway, um, um, you know me as Amy Newton Stapleton. <laughs> That's the name. Oh yeah, and, on the Twitter, <laughs> right? Yeah. How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I'm just fine. <laughs> So good. Yeah, Buddy me, Myers is a good friend of mine. I always liked him. Yeah. Good photographer. Yeah. Well, me and him still got our best friends. So. Uh, we always but. made sure that Buddy got right up there to ringside. He was our, like, official photographer, really. And so yeah, we gave he, Buddy the best seat in the house. 
<laughs> he still is. <laughs> and anyway, I guess it's me because I got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> you're still my hero. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. And Same anyway, me. I was just wondering um, if you had a chance to wrestle a wrestler that you never had wrestled, who would it be? Uh, to wrestle a guy that, um, you mean that just you never did to wrestle? Him? Yeah. For oh, I don't know. Probably, uh, uh, shoot, I could think of a million guys I'd like to wrestle. I'd like to wrestle, uh, <laughs> Bodie again, Gordy, all, all those guys. I, I had fun every time I was in the ring. I really did. Now, I can't think of a time I didn't. So, uh, you name a match, and I wish I, I, I would enjoy doing it again. I really would. I remember I was in Puerto Rico one night, and, uh, Big bolt of lightning and all the light. It's a packed house too, sold out, and all the lights went out. And I'm sitting in a packed building, people shoulder to shoulder, standing room only, and it's dark as a you're like you're in a cave, no lights mm-hmm. at all, and the whole place was quiet. And then you heard the crowd kind of start murmuring amongst themselves. You know, it was the oddest feeling. Carrie and I just leaned against back to back in the middle of the ring and just sat there in the dark, just surrounded by those thousands of people. It was a, it was so cool. Uh, that'd be that'd a fun be match scary. Yeah. I'd be scared. <laughs> so, so, and I also um, sent you a picture. I was just wondering if you got it. <laughs> well, uh, I can't really say. We I, I, we check our mail once a month out here. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of different out in a small island like this. Uh, uh-huh. uh, the the Post office is a pretty good drive, and we get in about once a month to, to okay. check our packages. Yeah. Well, it's probably check. waiting for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, then, Amy. I appreciate it. All right. It. Well, uh, we okay, want to well, thank, thank you, you for calling in. You're, you're, in our neck of, you're in my neck of the woods, so uh, we want to thank you for calling in. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, and thanks for letting me talk to him. <laughs> Spring's of coming. Course. Enjoy your spring in Fort Worth. Uh, I'm over by Lake Worth, if you know where that's at. Lake Worth, just north of Fort Worth, yeah. Yeah, that that that's where I'm at. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> kind of close to Real, Rog- Real Rogers. Oh, yeah, I remember. That's right. <laughs> that's where I went to go see you a lot. <laughs> uh-huh. I remember 7th Street Oyster Bar used to eat there after, after the wrestle matches. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you, so much. Thank, thank you so well, much thank for calling you. in. Nice, nice talking, talking to you, Kevin. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Okay, All Michael. Right, we're going uh, two yes. one zero area code. You're on live with Kevin Von Eric. Hi, yes, sir. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. This is Yumiko. Yumiko from you, Japan. Uh, Hello, Yumiko. How are you? Fine, thank you. I just wanted to say hello and um. I had a question regarding your movie project. That's why I called tonight. Uh, mm, I must have missed something. Yeah. Sweetie, will you say that, a little, say that again, please? Yes. Um, I was wondering when your movie project will complete. Oh, yes. That's, they're, that, they're, it's in the process right now. And mm-hmm. they're talking about some other things, too. But the... Uh, ESPN will be out, and they tell me in a few months they've made it longer. So it'll be mm-hmm. out in a few months, and then the movie and the book, or the movie will be after the, uh, the um, mm. <laughs> they're talking about a reality. I don't even want to say it out, out loud, but we'll find out later. But uh, the, the movie is still in the works for sure. We're doing that, and it's all moving along real well. In fact, faster than I would have thought. Mm-hmm. The financing is all put together, and it's, it's a done deal, so we'll be we'll be wrapping that up this week. It just happens to be, or this month. It just so happens to be a really busy month, though. So I don't okay. know I'm talking mm-hmm. for you, Kamiko, but I know you're such a sweet girl, and I I hope everything's going well for you out there in Japan. Thank you. Uh, thank you for calling. Thank you so much. I can't talk anymore. Okay. I'll tell Marshall thank and Ross you said hello. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, for anybody who wants more, before we take our next call, for anybody who wants more information about the Bon Air movie, uh, you can go to Facebook and you can type in Bon Air movie in your search bar, and there's a whole web, there's a whole page devoted to it, and they're updating it. You know, they're updating it every time they make a step in the process. They're updating it. 
and that is the best way to stay in the know on the modern movie. Correct, Kevin? I'd say so, yeah. The people that are putting those uh, Facebook pages together are doing the movie, and uh, they did both of them together. And, yeah, I get on there, and but I just put a post on there yesterday. And so, yeah, you can find me on there and then also on Twitter. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to talk. You know, dial me up. Huh? All right, here we go. We got an area code 214 number. You're on live with Kevin Von Eric. Are you there? Area code 214, are you there? Okay, we're going to move on. Okay, area code 361, are you there? Area code 361, are you there? Okay. All right, well, that's, that's fine. It's live radio, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> Your listeners mad, I think, buddy. Well, <laughs> I think oh, you hit anybody... a switch and cut them off or something. If anybody else uh, wants to call in, uh, you know, we're, we're we're here live with Kevin Von Eric, and we'll be here for a little bit. Uh, Michael, you said you had some other questions. Uh, go right ahead while we got a moment to breathe. Yeah, uh, definitely. We had some great callers and great questions there, and they definitely did take over the show for a couple minutes. Um, one thing, Kevin, just a little story I wanted to share with you real quick. Uh, Brian Westcott, who was on just a few minutes ago, mentioned when you were at the Cauliflower Alley reunion uh, 2000. Well, I believe it was. Um, funny little story about that. The first night we were there at the wrestling matches in the uh, in the ballroom, I happened to be standing over talking with Carl Lauer for a minute, and happened then I walked away. About two minutes later, they're announcing some of the uh, legends in the ring that are attending that night, and happened to look over my shoulder. He happened to be standing right where I was at just about two minutes before. Uh, the next day, I was walking around upstairs in the memorabilia room. And somebody came up to me and said, oh, Mike, did you see Kevin? He was just in here. No, I missed him. Oh, he just went. You and I played this great game of tag for about probably about a day and a half. I think it was the second day of the reunion that I finally crossed past you because whenever you would exit the room, that's when I was walking in or vice versa. If I exited the room, that's when you came in. Yeah, I played tricks on you all weekend. I had you going, didn't I? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was definitely you know, more and more people do that to Michael. Had. Michael, more and more people do that to you, and you just don't catch on. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kevin, Matt Riviera, all that I understand. But Kevin, I did get a chance to finally meet up with you. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you then. Um, not sure if you remember me, but I had a DVD for you that was the uh, footage of you versus Buddy Rose, your debut match. I happen to have I some do of that remember mine, mind. and I appreciate that. I sure do. And I, right. I hope you're having a, 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 a great day and, and, and enjoy the good spring coming real soon down there in Texas. So you'll have yeah, a Yeah, and from a from a personal standpoint, you know, I grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I mean I grew up I was born in nineteen eighty one. So I grew up during, you know, the the height of the Bon Air dynasty. And I will say I lived here, folks. This isn't you know, I wasn't working, I wasn't in the business. I was just a kid, really, really young, but I will tell you that there was no bigger deal at that time than the Von Erich family. You had the Von Erich, you had J.R. Ewing, you had the Dallas Cowboys, but first and foremost, you had the Von Erich family. It was a real big deal, and it was awesome to grow up in this territory. And, uh, you know, over, I, I, Kevin, I, I shared with you on Twitter a picture of me with Bill Mercer, Mark Lawrence, and Skandar Akbar. Yeah, th- yeah, those were some days, all right. I mean, gosh, it was like it was uh, such a close community. I mean, when Dave died, the funeral. I mean, for them to let they let schools out. I mean, all over. You know, it was to let school out. It's a big thing, and and they had the highway shut down. It was just like such respect. I just loved my fellow citizens for that. You know, just such consideration, and that just. Uh, what a special relation we have with our fans. I just, I love them all. I really do. They're with me in every bit, everything we went through, and they just stood behind me. And gosh, I'm so grateful. Have not forgotten me, you know, like they could have and should have. Really, I, they didn't. And uh, you know, they would love to pretend that I never existed, but thank goodness the fans won't let them. And I'm just so grateful to them for that. It's just, you know, I thought I turned the page, but evidently there's 
there's still a lot there. And my son's coming into the business. Who knows what God's doing? We're just, uh, we're just, we just keep our eyes on Him and and keep going, keep doing our very best. And He opens doors and closes doors, and we go around and we go through. So it's just, um, I couldn't be happier. This is the abundant life. That's what we're living. And, uh, you know, uh, yes, I agree with you 100%. And growing up in this territory, which is why I started a few years ago, I started the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame. And, Kevin, I know uh, Lisa spoke to you after I spoke to her. And uh, you are allowing us to honor your family into the Hall of Fame, a Hall of Fame that already has Akbar, Matt Bourne, Bruiser Brody, Harry Gordy. We have all these names and these and the families of the departed wrestlers have come and they have honored these uh, superstars, but to have the Von Eric family into the Hall of Fame, that is a really big deal. So, again, I want to thank you for allowing us to honor your family into the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame because without the Von Erichs into the Hall of Fame in Texas, it's it's a really big deal. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. that, too, you guys. And I'll tell you what, I'll try to send down something to like a, I don't know, some old trunks or something I can find, some kind of memorabilia. I'll look around, see if I can find anything, and I'll Send it your way so you can put something in your in your hall there. So I appreciate well, it. Well, we 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 appreciate that, Michael. Did you uh, you wanted to uh, you wanted to ask or you wanted to talk to Kevin about the encyclopedia, correct? Uh, yes, I did, um, Kevin. I'm hoping uh, I've been working with Lisa and a couple other people. I'm hoping you've had a chance to actually see some of those sample pages that I've sent your way. We did a uh, sample piece for you and Carrie and David to help promote the book. Um, I'm hoping you've had a chance to see them, and I was just kind of wondering. I mean, I hate to pat myself on the back, but I was kind of wondering just what your opinion on them was and what you thought, because I haven't gotten a lot of feedback from anybody yet. Well, who who is, is this? Goldstein? Michael. What was your name again? Michael. Michael. Michael McCurdy. I'm the host of the show. Oh, yeah. Hi, Michael. Yeah, no, I... I um, uh, I haven't read a thing. I haven't seen anything at all. Uh, how would you send it? Email or in, in the I mail? I sent no. Lisa, and she was supposed to forward them to your wife so that you could see them. How long ago was this? Uh, a month or so ago. Oh, really? It's hard to say. I'll check. I'll check with her and see. In fact, it could be in a stack. I'll tell you, Mike, We are. I'm selling my property and I trade, I'm picking up another uh, another piece of property for this one, and so I've got a million things going on, and so that's probably my fault. Let's don't blame her. It's probably my fault, but I will get to that. And I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, but I'll look at it, and I'll get right back to you. How about that? I'll have somebody get back to you. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, while right. I do have you, I have a question for you real quick. Uh, you were talking about David's passing, and unfortunately yesterday marked uh, – the anniversary of Carrie's passing. Back in 84, when Carrie won the title from Flair at the Memorial, the Parade of Champions, um, what was it like backstage in the locker room at that time? And did you guys know that you were creating, like, this moment that was going to be remembered? Was it something that was like, was there, like, any electricity in the air? What was the feeling back in the locker room during that time with uh, Carrie winning the title? Well, it was great. You know, we just, uh, it was, uh, yeah, kind of bittersweet. We're still stinging over Dave, but then to have that huge crowd like that was uh, was great, and the locker room was just, you know, uh, buzz, and it was a great day for all of us. And to be able to share it with uh, 50,000 friends was a, made it an even better day. So uh, it was a great Texas Stadium show. I think we had one a year. It really, it really, it really was. I mean, like, like Kevin said, I mean, I, you know, I lived here during that time, and even as a little kid, we heard about this. The first wrestling video I ever bought, Kevin, was uh, I think it was PWI, a Lords of the Ring, hosted by Bill After and Gord Foley, and they had the, they had I believe they had the Junkyard Dog, and the Missy Link, Dewey Robertson, and then they had the Six Man with you, your dad. And uh, 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 Mike against the Freebirds when Fritz came out of retirement. And then they had Carrie and Nature Boy Ric Flair for the NWA World Heavyweight title. And, uh, you know, that moment 
that moment where Terry hits the backslide on Flair. It is it is just one of those wow, just it's one of those moments that just lives in your mind. I mean, for all the wrestling that I've seen over the years, I remember that moment and I remember Fritz putting the iron claw, the free birds and Terry coming in with his boot. <laughs> so it's those moments that stick with me, so uh, well, what being a, in the ring like and that. being on the uh, opposite, you know, let me tell you my take on it. In that match, uh, we got in the ring, and it was it was hot, and so I was worried about my dad having a heart attack because it's easily 130 degrees on that field. And I was worried about my dad. He was, you know, it was a come-as-you-are match, and so he, you know, I knew he was going to be hot because he's wearing long pants and a shirt. And so I didn't want Dad in the ring. I wanted to handle it. I wanted me and Mike to handle it. If I needed Mike, I'd tag him. But I wanted Dad out. And uh, so we hit the ring and bang, 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 we're all over the birds, and we throw him out. And uh, I catch Terry really good, and I throw him out. Well, Terry stomps a chair flat and throws it in the ring, and it's headed right for my Dad's head. And I just dove like I was back in football, and I just dove and just tipped it and knocked it away from his head. But there was a jagged piece of that metal chair that was sharp, and it uh, it just opened my finger all the way to the bone. And I was wearing white pants, and I got my pants all bloody. But I remember I hit the ground, and I just kept my dad from getting knocked out with that metal chair. And he said, get up off of the ground. What the hell are you doing down there? <laughs> That's what I remember about that. Okay, it was, I was worried it. about dad. All that heat, I was really worried about him. Yeah, it re- it really was. Uh, I believe we have a couple more callers, Kevin. Do you got time to take a couple more questions? You bet. Okay. All right. Uh, Michael, do you got a caller? Uh, yes, I do. We have uh, a number that's kind of appeared here. Let's see what we can come up with. We've got zero one one three five three one. You're on live with Kevin Von Eric. Thanks. Hey, Kev. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Did you expect your fans to be from so far and wide away? Well, where are you calling from? I'm the one from Dublin. It's from, Kathleen. From Dublin? Hello, Kathleen. <laughs> How are you? Another How Twitter. are you? <laughs> well, you sent me some chocolate, didn't you? You're a chocolate lunatic. <laughs> you sweet thing. I sure appreciate <laughs> that. So, you're calling from Ireland, eh? Dublin? I am indeed. Uh, I just wanted to say hello and thanks very much to you and Pam and the lads and the girls and everyone because we have invaded your life big time. <laughs> well, I can I can take it. I'm a big boy. <laughs> you have to take it now. <laughs> well, Catherine, I sure do appreciate all the sweet things you say all the time. How are you doing today? You're having a good day? I am. I'm flying to Portugal Friday morning. I'm walking my way around to your end of the world. Are you? You traveling? Oh, it's just a weekend break. Oh well. Well deserved. You go, yeah. That's a beautiful part of the country you live in. It's pretty nice. Something oh. close to where you are. <laughs> well, you hear all these things about Ireland. I, uh, a good friend of mine's uh, named Glenn Denning, and he went to Ireland to look up his roots, you know, and. He was an old teammate from football in college, and he uh, went out there and uh, loved it, just loved it. even thought about moving out there, buying a place. He's a real estate mogul, you know, so he has houses all over the world. <laughs> but he he wants to have a house in Ireland, too. He's a, he's a, he's well, a it's big, a good time to buy. The prices are still low. <laughs> yeah, I think I will. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not going to drag everybody over here. Now, yeah, I well. wanted to say thanks, Kevin, because I'm sure we don't hear much from Pam, and she has to put up with an awful lot, I'm sure. Well, you know, she's, and got, I don't... she's a grandmother, and she's as happy as she could be. But she's what? sitting right over here. She'd be glad to talk. I don't know if she's shaking her head. No, she doesn't like to talk <laughs> on the radio. That's good. Well, now that she can hear us, we are very grateful, Pam, for all you do. Well, she's smiling real big and pretty, so thank you a lot, Catherine. Appreciate that. Good. Well, I'm not going to hold you up because I'm sure everybody wants to talk to you, Kevin. So I just want to say hi. Well, we're sure good hearing from you, Catherine. Thanks for calling. No bother. 
Sure, I'll talk I to you, you again. Soon, okay. Okay. Bye bye, sure. Hi, love. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, you so much, Catherine. Or... Okay. We got another Michael, talker, go ahead. David. This is kind of something that I, I kind of like this name. We've got Raider Nation 677. You're live with Kevin Von Erich. Hello? 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 Oh, hello. I'm calling from overseas as well. I am not from Dublin, though. I'm calling from India. <laughs> okay, how are you doing there, Arpu? What are you laughing at, motherfucker? You fucking oh, what's your mouth? What, what do we got going on here? Uh, but, uh, uh, that was somebody. That conversation. Yeah, that was. There's always somebody out there with some new device recording uh, voices and cartoons and movies. And uh, I apologize for that. It is live radio. Uh, we did ask our guest to. Uh, you know, it is what it is. We're moving along, so. Yeah, you all remember, uh, ladies are listening, and we're, you know, have fun, but let's remember that, you know, there are things we guys say to each other that we don't say when ladies are around, so clean it up, boys. <laughs> exactly. I definitely exactly. agree. Okay. But, uh, I'm looking at the switchboard here. Uh, we're gonna what, try. We're gonna we're gonna try. Well, we're gonna try this three six one again. They've been hanging on. All right, three six one. We tried you earlier. And nobody answered. Are you there? Three six one. Okay. Apparently, they're just gonna listen to the show. Okay. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kevin, you really you got a lot going on right now. I know you're working on a property deal. Uh, so what we're gonna do is is we're gonna give you this opportunity if you wanna say anything to the fans, um, we're gonna plug everything that you got going on, your social media. Uh I do know that uh you did film a piece for ESPN thirty for thirty and they're still in production on that. Is there any idea when that's gonna air? I know it'll be a couple of months. I know that they had a, um they had a certain way that they were gonna go with it and they've decided to lengthen it. They're really happy with it and I think it's gonna be really a good one, so Stay tuned, and I'm not sure, but I know it'll be a couple more months now, so stay tuned. I cannot wait for that, folks. You you... Enjoy talking with you guys. Enjoy doing your show, and I hope you all do well. And to all of my fans out there, thank you guys for being so loyal and uh, and and just uh, all the nice things you say to me on the Internet. I, I appreciate it so much, and the things you said about Kerry today. Thank you all, and, and you know, hey, uh, God bless all those Good folks, we lost on this good on this good day. So, so uh, thank you all, and I'll see you down the road. It was a great interview, Sounds guys. Good, Kevin. Thank you, sir. We'll have you back on. You betcha. So thank, you. thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that was Kevin Von Eric, uh, the world famous Von Eric family. He's going to be inducted into the 2015 IHW Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame along with the brothers, and uh, we'll be right back with more IHWE Radio. The legends of Mid South are back. The Mid South Legends Fan Fest takes place Friday, April 4th in Shaman, Louisiana at Seeger Center. Cowboy Bill Watt, Jim Cornette, and the Midnight Express. Mr. Wrestling 2, the Rock and Roll Express, and many more are slated for this once in a lifetime event. You'll also see live wrestling featuring the JYD Memorial Cup, Mickey James versus Angelina Love, and a host of others. Get your tickets now. For more info, go to MidSouthLegends.com. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with IHWE Radio. We just had a very uh, good conversation with Kevin Von Eric of the Von Eric family. And uh, I want to thank him for coming on tonight. And uh, we want to thank all the callers, well, 99.9% of the callers. We enjoyed your questions. I know Kevin loves hearing from fans all over the country, all over the world. We had some callers in from, I think we had a caller in from Dublin. We had callers in from all over Texas, and I believe for some other states. It's always a treat to get to talk to Kevin. We're going to have him back on, uh, hopefully, uh, in the next few months as we get closer to things. I want to thank Brian Westcott for calling in. Uh, he's always a treat. He does a lot of work for uh, for Michael and his uh, faculty at WCCW. Brian works for the College Player Alley Club. They're really good friends of ours. And, uh, yeah, Michael, so uh, exciting interview we just had. Big honor. That was a great interview. Uh, I enjoyed all the callers that called in, except for one. So it's live radio. I got a live mic. I got something I want to say for a second. 
as Kevin said, there are things that you say when you're back in the back with the guys, you're in the locker room. There's ways you talk. You don't talk that way around the ladies. And one thing that we did stress last week, this show is about promoting goodwill. This show is about promoting the positive side of professional wrestling. So for Raider Nation to call in and make a fool of himself on our show is disrespectful to Kevin. It's disrespectful to us. It's disrespectful to the woman who had just called earlier from Dublin, Ireland, because obviously he was making a little joke about being from India or whatever he was saying. I appreciate Kevin with his Apu reference. I thought that was great. But in the future, we're going to have some other guests on here. We're going to have gorgeous Gary Young coming on soon. We're going to have Jameson. We're going to have Dan Murphy. We're going to have we are not going to tolerate questions like that or comments or statements or any type of smart aleck remarks from any callers. As you see, like we told you last week, we have the X. We'll drop you like a hot potato. Please do not do that again. Thank you. And it does happen with live radio. Kevin was a good sport about it. Uh, we, we cannot uh, We cannot control uh, when we're allowing live, uh, when we're doing live call-ins, we cannot control what everybody will say. Uh, all we can do is listen closely, and if uh, and if we don't like what the caller is saying, we can just immediately expand, which is what we did do. Uh, we do apologize for anybody who was offended. It's just a prank caller. Happens all the time in live radio. Uh, happens all the time live. You know, anything you do live, there's always a risk. Uh, the best thing we can do is move past it. Uh, it was a great interview, and we really want to thank Kevin for coming on. Hopefully get him on again uh, real soon. Uh, we'll talk about more, uh, uh, some other things, the book, uh, the Hall of Fame, all that good uh, all that good jazz. So, uh, so anyway, folks, we're going we're gonna to hang out here uh, for about another 30 minutes. Uh, since Kevin was on for about an hour, we're going to hang with you for about another 30 minutes and promote uh, what we got coming up. Uh, next week, I believe we have a very interesting show uh, because we're going to be airing an old interview that I did with General Skandar Akbar. Uh, I did it in the year 2008. I thought it was a great guest. And uh, also next week, we're going to have Fred Urban. He runs old school wrestling, OSW wrestling, out of, uh, I believe, Midland, the Per Mason Basin here in Texas. And I believe, Michael, you and Joe Seuss are going to be talking about an event y'all got coming up in March in California, correct? Yes, we are. Um, he, Joe will be joining me next week on this show. Uh, we are promoting our show here in Eureka, March 22nd at the Redwood Acres Fairgrounds. Main event is a no rule street fight between Drexel and HBQ. Uh, there are two wrestlers from up in the Oregon area. They're going to be coming down to tear it up for the fans that night. Uh, we got a good show. We're going to have a great card lined up that night. And also to uh, promote the local aspect of that, this show will be linked to a local uh, blog talk or podcast radio service that night. So not only will we be broadcast in the great state of Texas and all over the world through blog talk radio, we're also going to be broadcast in my hometown through the podcast. So as I said last week, David, this is my chance to shine. So uh, you just sit back and let me do my work. Well, when you do the work, I will let you do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and then on March 5th... did all our work. (laughs) Correct? Uh, What was that? I said with this show tonight, most of the callers did all our work. They did. It makes our job easier. Uh, um, uh, March 5th, we got Jameson, who was a character in the World Wrestling Federation... Uh, 1989 through about 1992. Uh, most of you will remember him as the sidekick of Bobby the Brain Heaton on the Bobby Heaton Show. And I believe he managed the Bushwhackers. Uh, he did some just different things for the uh, World Wrestling Federation. And uh, he's been a guest on other podcasts before. And I heard he's been a great guest. He's been really nice to me. I'm really looking forward to talking to him. Jameson is a, is a kooky character. And I'm really looking forward to having him on. I think it's going to be a very interesting show. On March the 12th, that's going to, it's going to be days before the 2014 IHWE Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, gorgeous Gary Young's going to be on here. He's a 2014 inductee. And then on March 19th, we're going to do something different. 
because uh, what I'll be doing on March 15th during the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame is I'll be running around with a voice recorder, and I'll be getting comments from some of the uh, dignitaries at, uh, excuse me, I should say luminaries, or guests, I should say, guests at the Hall of Fame ceremony. We'll be getting their comments uh, from different people, and we'll be uh, patching them into the show. So March 19th should be a Texas blockbuster edition of IHWE Radio because we'll be getting comments from the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. And uh, I believe we, we've got a lot of interesting guests coming on. So just uh, stay in the know, facebook.com backslash IHWE Pro Wrestling, and you'll get to hear all of it. A big week next week for professional wrestling because on uh, Monday is the launch of the WWE Network. And we're going to be talking about this more next Wednesday, but uh, there's a lot – this is a huge undertaking for professional wrestling. Uh, there's a lot. There's so much going into this because this could change the complexion of the business as we know it. Uh, you know, because it could change the pay-per-view landscape. You know, uh, in the past 30 years, well, 30 years is a stretch, maybe 28, 27. Uh, pay-per-view has been the spot for the big wrestling shows. Uh, you know, uh, stand Saturday night's main event, Clash of Champions, the Monday Night Wars. But pay-per-view has pretty much been it. But next week, those pay-per-views might have turned into super cards because – and they'll still be on pay-per-view carriers. This is going to be really interesting. And next week, there's a whole week of programming. Uh, you know, there's there's pre-shows and post-shows to the weekly television shows. There's a big NXT why two hour super card it's going to happen on Thursday night the 27th of course there's Wrestlemania that's going to air on the network for the first time and then the uh, whole Hall of Fame induction for 2014 is going to air for the first time which I love the Hall of Fame obviously it's one of my favorite events of the year so there's a lot riding on this I'm very interested to get to Monday I think it's going to be fantastic I cannot wait as a wrestling fan I cannot wait, and uh, yeah, Michael, wh- what are your thoughts on this? Is it just it's just that much closer to Network Watch Day? I can talk now. I, I guess. Done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you go, man. You hopped up on that soapbox and off you went. <laughs> um, yeah, dead I'm air, dead air, it. dead air. Talk, talk, talk. I was trying to before you rudely interrupted me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to the WWE Network. Uh, I think I finally have all the proper cables and streaming boxes and everything I need to be able to watch whatever programs are, whether I want to watch it on my tablet or my computer or my TV or my Xbox or my PlayStation or what other, other pieces of equipment it's going to be on. Uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to go. Uh, adding the pay-per-views is definitely going to be interesting because I read yesterday that the first shot has been fired, per se. Um, Dish Network is not offering the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view this weekend. Now, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view isn't offered on the network. The network goes live the following day, but Dish Network has already said that, well, they're firing the first shot. They're not going to carry the pay-per-view. And honestly, I think if any other places follow suit, some of your cable companies, your direct TV that's going to hit the pocketbook a little bit because I don't think the network is going to be big enough to start to make up for pay-per-view buys. So if they're losing companies to carry their pay-per-views, it could change kind of how the network works. The network could end up being like WWE Classics 24-7. You're going to get all the old stuff. You'll get the new shows that are network-specific like Legends House and WrestleMania Rewind, I think it is, and the Countdown Show, and some of the other stuff. But if the other companies start dropping the pay-per-views, then WWE may not carry them on the network to make sure they get those pay-per-views back. So that'll be interesting to kind of see how that works. But speaking of Elimination Chamber, that is coming up this Sunday. Uh, Definitely got some big matches coming up on that one. Um, I'm sure you have your picks of who you think is going to win or what you'd like to see. So, I don't know. Let's kind of throw some matches out there, David, and let, let's get our opinions. We'll see who can pick the right winners. You know, let's, you know, let's make a friendly wager. 
we'll we'll figure out. Well, uh, before, before, way. before before we get into that, I want to retort to your comment okay. about the network. Uh, you bring up you bring up a valid point. I think the WWE is going to be investing in this at least for the next five years. I don't. They've spent millions of dollars developing this network and hiring MLB Advanced Media to make sure that there is no issues as far as the streaming in. So I don't. I think they are. I think they are prepared for the worst case scenario. I think the worst case scenario would be that all the other distributors drop their pay per views. But I think they prepared for that. So I think they're going to go into this knowing, hey, we can lose one, two, five, or all the pay-per-view uh, providers, but we're still going to do this. I firmly believe that they are invested into this longer than just one year. I don't think in a year they're going to say, well, that didn't work. Let's go back to the way it was. The WWE may have some questionable people working in the creative department from time to time uh, buying the what you see on television, but I guarantee you they have the smartest people working in the financial department. And they have gone through every number meticulously. That's why the network was delayed for so long. I firmly believe they have got all their ducks in a row. It could fail. It could. There's That is out there. Failure does happen. But I don't think it will. I think it will take some time before they break even, I think it'll take some time before they start to see a return on that investment. The one thing that I think everybody seems to be forgetting is, is WWE this week, or excuse me, in the next few months, will be renegotiating their TV rights package for all their first-run programming. And this is a very strategic and very intelligent move because they make sure that all their first-run live programming – is up at the same time. And they're looking they're looking for an increase of their licensing fees. If they get the increase that they're looking for, which I think they're looking for around the same lines as NASCAR, I think they will make up for any loss that the network may incur due to them moving all the pay per views to the network. And I think Dave Meltzer said pretty much similar to the same thing. I might be uh, I might be wrong. Uh I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but I believe the I think what they're thinking is, is if we get the licensing fees package deal that we get from either NBC Universal or the the other uh, network that we move to for Raw SmackDown main event uh, Saturday Morning Slam, if they decide to bring it back, it will make up for any first year losses with the network. So, and that's very smart if they can do it. Of course, I don't work there. I'm not working with any of the networks, so I don't know. I'm I'm on the outside looking in. I'm just going by what I've heard. But I think that is the mindset. Uh, so we'll, we'll I'll be interested to see. I think it's a great move, and I think over the long haul they will see a return on their investment. Okay, Elimination Chamber Sunday. Uh, do the, with the, okay. What what matches do you want to go over? We we only know a few of them. I guess let's do the Usos. And the New Age Outlaws for the tag team titles. I say the Usos. I would like to thank the Usos, but I think them winning on Monday is going to make sure the Outlaws retain. I would love to see the Usos win. I see the yeah. Usos because I actually think that with the New Age Outlaws winning the titles, it's so that they can pass those titles on to the next young tag team that's coming up. You'll give them the well, they probably give them the rub. So therefore that's why I see the Usos taking the belt. I don't I didn't see them taking them from Cody and Goldust because Cody and Goldust were although not a new team, they were still one of the hot teams at the time. I unfortunately think the New Age Outlaws are just kind of a transition team. It got some attention, they're getting their moment, and now they're gonna pass them on to the Usos. Well, that's what needs to happen. I agree with you. I think it needs to happen. Uh, I don't know if it will or not, but we'll have to see on Sunday. Okay, we've got, I believe, Biggie Langston is going to be defending the Intercontinental title against Jack Swagger. Who do you got? That one I see Biggie Langston retaining. I'm just, I've am i never been impressed with Jack Swagger, how that guy was ever a world heavyweight champion. I'm not quite sure. He's good in the ring, but character-wise, he's boring. I've never been a Swagger fan. I'm going to give this one to Biggie. 
I like Swagger. I think he's a little underestimated. Uh, he, yeah, he's he's lacking on the charisma, but he does have one of the best talkers and one of the best minds in the business at his side. And he has seemed to be improving since he's been teaming up with Cesaro. Uh, I don't think Swagger is going to win, but I, I think Swagger is one of the best that they have. He's a naturally gifted amateur wrestler. And, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of have your thinking and that's fine you know i i can see that but i like swagger i think he's one of the better hands that they have uh let's see here I forget what the other matches i know well i know what the big matches are okay we got batista and alberto del rio this should be a no-brainer it's gonna go to batista and i will probably be in the bathroom during the entire match i'm <laughs> not interested i'm sorry I'm not interested. I'm not a fan of El. I'm a fan of Alberto Del Rio when he's in the right situation. You know, this is not the right situation for Alberto Del Rio. This is just someone to feed to Batista to make him to push him to get him that to give him that little bit of you know make him a little bit bigger when he hits WrestleMania to face Randy Orton, which honestly I don't think is going to end up being Batista versus Randy Orton in a singles match. I think they're going to change something because Batista is just. He's as dull as yesterday's dishwater. So, unfortunately, I'm going to give it to Batista. I'll find out after I come out of the commode. All right. Well, I think Batista's going to win as well. I won't be as critical as Michael, but uh, I believe Batista will be winning it as well. Okay. A lot of people consider this match to be the main event, and it's one of the most highly anticipated undercard matches they've had in a long time. The Shield. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns against Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan, the Wyatt family. This is going to be a knockdown, dragged out, fantastic match that has had some unbelievable build. Who do you got? This one, I think, as you said, is going to be the match of the show. I think it's going to steal the spotlight away from the Elimination Chamber. I'm a fan of the Shield, especially Roman Reigns. I am a huge fan of the Wyatt family. I like the character. I like the way they built it up. I was a fan of Bray Wyatt when he was originally there, when he was the army tank with the Camaro, or however they put it, when he was working as Husky Harris with the Nexus and CM Punk. I'm going to give this to the Wyatt family, not just because I'm a fan, but overall, I think the Wyatt family is just that much better in this matchup because you're seeing the problems with the shield. You know, Roman Reigns is going to go his own way. Eventually they're going to replace him. Somehow the shield will keep on going, but on this one, it's going to be a great match. I'm giving it to the Wyatt family and it's definitely the match that I'm looking forward to on Sunday. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I got the Wyatt family. Uh, I think the shield is going to self-destruct. Uh, so I got the Wyatt family. And then the Elimination Chamber match, you got Randy Orton defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Christian, against Sheamus, who I call Sheamus, Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, and John Cena. Who do you got? This one's a little tough, actually, because Elimination Chamber, we never quite know what they're going to do. I know everybody wants to see Daniel Bryan come out as the champion. It's going to happen, though. I think Randy Orton's going to retain. And this is my reason why, so everybody just hear me out for a second. I don't want all the Daniel Bryan fans calling up right now on live radio and yelling at me and everything. We're good. Uh, I see it coming down to Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. I see Orton winning. Somehow, you know, a little help from the authority. Or somehow he's going to win. And I think over the next few weeks they're going to set it up and come WrestleMania, my opinion, you're going to see Randy Orton versus Batista, versus Daniel Bryan. That's where Daniel Bryan's going to win the title. That's how I see it going. Now, I'm not part of WWE Creative. I'm not a booker, never have been. March 22nd is my first shot at even promoting a live show, so we'll see how that goes. But watching TV the way it goes, I see Randy Orton retained at the Elimination Chamber. I see Daniel Bryan getting inserted in the main event at WrestleMania. And that's where he's going to win the title. I don't see Batista winning it at WrestleMania. I do see Batista going after Daniel Bryan once or twice afterwards. 
and then Batista will probably go off on to some other little feud somewhere. He's probably going to stick around for another year or so. But that's how I see it. The Elimination Chamber is basically going to be the build-up to give everybody what they want to see, which is Daniel Bryan winning the title. But it's going to be at WrestleMania. So I'm giving the Elimination Chamber to Randy Orton. Oh, uh, that's a good, that's a good, uh, you know, that's a, that's a, that's not a bad look at things. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. Uh, I don't really want to give a prediction. Uh, because I think something's going to happen to change the whole landscape of the match before the match even finishes on Sunday. I think something's going to happen. Uh, there's a good chance Randy Orton will walk out of Minnesota as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But I'm just, I'm not going to make a prediction. I'm just going to sit back and watch and see what happens. Because I think something underlining is going to happen that night. I have no reason to report that. I don't have a source. I don't have a ball. I haven't gotten any late-breaking news. It's just something that I feel is going to happen. I've been watching wrestling for a long time, and sometimes you just get that feeling. So, we will see what happens on Sunday, and we will be right back with more IHW Radio. For the first time ever, the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest will take place Friday, April 4th in Charlotte, Louisiana at the Seeger Center. Don't miss Q&A with the founder of Mid-South Wrestling, Cowboy Bill Watt. With Jim Cornette. A change in dinner with the stars. Photo ops with legends like the Midnight Express. Mr. Wrestling 2. Mr. Olympia. Kamala. And more. Oh, but there's more. In the evening, the Battle Lines Live Wrestling event will feature a JYD Memorial Cup Battle Royale honoring the Late Junkyard Dog, plus the Rock and Roll Express, Bill Dundee, Tommy Dreamer, the Pope, Elijah Bird, the Masterpiece, Chris Adonis, will all be in action. Plus, Dark Journey returns to manage the Empire in a six-man tag team match. And Mickey James will take on Angelina Love in the squared circle. Make your plans now to attend this once-in-a-lifetime event Friday, April 4th at the Seeger Center in Shelf. For more information, go to MidSouthLegends.com. Be a part. Mid-South history today. All right, we're back on IHWE Radio. Uh, that was an advertisement there, obviously, for the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest. Unfortunately, I can't remember what date they just said. I really wasn't paying attention for a second. I apologize for April that. April 4th, Michael. April 4th. You call yourself oh, a host. Oh, April 4th. I know. I'm trying to call myself a host. I- I'm failing. I apologize. Sorry, sir. Um Hopefully, folks, I still have a job here next week. That should be the running thing of the show. Tune in every week to see, does Michael still have a job? <laughs> next week, does Michael still have a job? Yep, he's there. The next week, is he still there? Now, unfortunately, March 19th, I'm telling you all, I'm not going to be here. Hopefully, March 26th, I'll be coming back. But th- this could be a running thing. Want to anyway, see how the ratings? Got... We want to see how the downloads and the live listens. If we get a whole lot of listens and downloads March 19th, then maybe we'll need a re- – no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Michael's here to stay, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of friendly ribbons, but Michael's here to stay. So He's my partner in this, uh, so he's here to stay. So whether Thank you sir. like him or don't, and sometimes I really have a hard time justifying it, he's here to stay. Michael, you wanted to say something. The floor is yours. I did want to say something, but I'm going to go on to another topic for just for a second, sir. Uh, you're talking about uh, you know, March 19th. We're going to see how download numbers are. We're going to see if, if I'm gone, if they go up. There's one little factor in there. You got Matt Riviera sitting in for me while I'm gone on March 19th. So I want to take his schedule because he's working on a, he's working, he's working on another reality series uh, right now, actually. So I'm supposed so, to be so meeting up with Matt this weekend. He's going to be wrestling in North Texas this weekend. I'm actually meeting with Matt this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. We have some business to discuss. Uh, but Matt's actually working on another reality series. So uh, you never know. Matt said he's going to be on with me March 19th, but you just never know. I know he will be at the Hall of Fame, and we'll be hanging out most of that weekend. So uh, Matt's a good friend of well, mine. I, so. know I know he'll be at the Cauliflower Island Club reunion also. But yeah. unfortunately, as I said last week, him and I always just play this lovely game of parallel line where I see him, but we've never met. We're still working on that. And All as far as you now, you want to be with him. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, there's one thing I am gonna bring this up. It's I'm not. I'm just having a little fun here. Yeah, I don't mean I don't want to hurt Matt's feelings. He, he's a wrestler. He's kind of he's a little bigger guy. I think I'm a little bigger than he is, but he's a big guy. He could actually hurt me. Um, I believe he is younger than me too. I'm getting kind of old. But uh, one little kind of a story you mentioned reality shows and all that. Now I'm not that well versed in Matt Riviera's career and the reality shows. The one thing I remember him from, unfortunately, is Megan Wants a Millionaire, which is on VH1 which is one of the blondes from the Brett Michaels show, I think, one of his Rock of Love shows, was looking for a millionaire. And Matt Riviera was a professional wrestler. He was on the show. He, he got eliminated or voted off, however it worked. But the catch with Megan was a millionaire is nobody ever saw the end of that show because that was the one where it had the contestant who had, like, killed his girlfriend or something. So, unfortunately, as far as the reality series goes, that's – been kind of my exposure to Matt Riviera. I've had the chance to see him in the ring a couple times at Cauliflower Alley, and he is a damn good wrestler. I will give him credit where credit is due. He knows what he's doing. He's really good at what he does. But as far as the reality goes, unfortunately, that's the only thing I really know him from. And I apologize. I might have to sit down and talk with him. Maybe he can fill me in some more in his reality career. But unfortunately, Megan wants a millionaire. is the only thing I remember him from. We'll set something up with the secretary. Maybe if he has the time, I'm sure he will meet with you, but we'll have to go through the proper channels. Secretary. I want a secretary. Yeah. Give me a secretary, boss. She uh, can talk okay. to you. Said, well, that way you can talk to her, and then she can relay the messages to me. You know, that way oh, you and man. I, because <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, let me get back on topic here for a second. Uh, we were talking about a couple of the matches coming up, Biggie Langston versus Jack Swagger. We mentioned Cesaro in the uh, Elimination Chamber. One question I have, and this is just, it bugs me. Where did their names go? He came out one week and he's Cesaro. He's not Antonio Cesaro, he's just Cesaro. No rhyme or reason, he's just Cesaro. Biggie Langston is, is now just Big E. He's Big E now. Where does last name go? I think it's a Vince McMahon decision. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Vince's head. I would never question Vince's creativity or his reasoning. Number one, I don't work for Vince. Number two, it's not my money. Uh, I believe I heard uh, Antonio was dropped. I think it's just I, I think it's because I don't I don't really know. I, I maybe it's easier for kids to remember. I mean, at the same time, I mean, how many uh, you know maybe somebody else from NXT is getting called up and they're going to have the name Antonio. <laughs> I don't know how many people called Big E Big E Langston. I think people just called him Big E. And I mean, I think once people get into uh, the thing is, if people start running with something, they'll they'll latch on. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any real reason for it. I think Vince just decided one day, hey, this is the way it's going to go, and you know, once he once he brings the hammer down, that's just the way it is. I don't think it's going to affect anything. And, you know, there's oh, I'm not uh, thing. I just wanted to know where their names went. Um, now, what I, I read went online to, uh, that. What I read online is that Vince just didn't like the name Antonio. Maybe. I, I don't like the name. You know what? I don't like the name David. I'm just going to start calling you Fuller. Let's go with that. People have been doing that for years. All right. Well, I'm going to start doing that. Next week, okay. IAW Radio. Welcome Mr. to I'm your host. Fuller. And Mr. here's my host, Fuller. the man you used to call David. We'll just call him Fuller. Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller, Mr. Fuller, that is fine. Okay. I'll make you a bet. I'll fine. make you a little bit of wager right now. Let's, let's have a little game here, a little fun. Okay. Uh, we picked our we we picked our winners who we thought was going to win what for the uh, the pay per view, right? If your predictions, if your picks, you pick more winners than I do. Next week on this show, I'm your host, Michael McCurdy, the creator and author, and joining me is my co-host, Mr. Fuller. I will refer to you as Mr. Fuller 
for the entire <laughs> show next week. We have to have a wager for you to 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 have. Wait a minute. We have to have a wager for you not to have to say, David, you got to be ribbing me. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say Fuller. I wasn't going to say Mr. I don't appreciate Mr. I don't like Mr. That's, that's a little too much respect for you. But on the flip side, though, if I get more wins, then by all means, it should just be, you know, Mr. McCurdy. I think that's fair. Little respect. One night only. I would call you Mrs. McCurdy, but I think that would be an insult to your wife. Yeah, well, my wife has a hyphenated last name because she didn't want to completely be a McCurdy. So, <laughs> McCurdy is a weird name. I was talking to Morgan Miller the other day, and, 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 Mor- and Morgan was like, "You tell McCurdy," and I was like, "Who the hell's McCurdy?" Michael. Uh, oh yeah, Michael. Michael. Well, Morgan's so. from Rural Hall, North Carolina, so it's probably kind of hard for him to actually say my last name. Pretty much. I mean, no offense Curdy. to Morgan, but had a conversation with him. You kind of need a little bit of a you know country dictionary to understand some of the times. Oh, what he me just and said. Morgan get along great. I think it's because we sound the same. I love Morgan. Yes. Oh, Morgan's a great guy, but I can see him having a problem saying my last name. Now, just to, I'm going to throw this in here for a second. We did have a caller earlier from you know Dublin, Ireland. And McCurdy is actually an Irish name, so I actually kind of enjoyed having the caller from Dublin call in there because my full name is completely Irish. You can't be any more Irish unless my name was Shaughnessy or Seamus. So, yeah, I am. I do have a lot of Irish blood in me, so it was quite nice to hear that caller from uh, you know Dublin there. So thank you for making fun of my last name. I appreciate it. Sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, obviously, we have just completely ran out of things to talk about. So, uh, <laughs> we have, <laughs> so we are just going to uh, call it a night here on ICW Radio. This will happen from time to time. Uh, we uh, we uh, we had a great show tonight. We had a lot of callers. Uh, Kevin's got a lot going on right now. I believe he just posted that uh, there's some kind of property transaction going on where he's at in Hawaii. And uh, that's awesome. Good for him. And uh, uh, he's got the uh, ESPN, which is out there not too long ago. He's going to be on a, the Bonner family. is going to be featured on a, a segment of ESPN 30 for 30. As soon as we know when that will air, we will let you know via social media and via this show. Uh, we'll be sure to let you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so next week right here, we're going to have uh, the interview with Skandar Akbar, the late Skandar Akbar from 2008. And we will have Joe Sousa on with Michael. We're going to talk about their event coming up in California. And then we're going to have Fred Urban. I believe one of the OSW wrestlers on. Uh, that's next week right here live on IHW Radio. And if you want to catch me, uh, you can. if you want to follow IHWE, search us on Facebook, IHWE Pro Wrestling. I'm on Twitter at HXC Fuller. And you can download the archives of this show via this Blog Talk Radio site, or you can go to iTunes and search IHWE Radio. Mid South Fan Fest is April 4th, and it's MidSouthLegends.com. James Beard, uh, IHWE Hall of Famer, has a book out, JamesBeardBook.com. Michael, what have you got? As always, you can find me on Twitter at EncyclowCCW. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Encyclopedia World Class. And that's all I got. I don't do Instagram. I'm not on YouTube. As I said last week, I watch YouTube. I'm not on YouTube. Um, And, of course, you will see me every once in a while pop up on the IHWE page. I do like to pick on uh, Fuller every once in a while there, so I kind of tend to appear and, yeah, next week we have Fred Urban, my co-promoter for the March 22nd show here in Eureka, California at the Railroad Acres Fairgrounds. 
Main event, no rules. Street fight between Drexel and HBQ. Joe Souza will be joining me. He's the co-promoter for that show. I got a couple other uh, little surprises for that one. I think David's going to enjoy this because, honestly, I'm hoping David will kind of help me out with that one because it would be kind of odd for Joe and I just to talk to ourselves. So, you know, hopefully David might kind of kick in and, you know, take over as the host for that for a minute there because we got some good stuff coming up. And also, as we have said, Jameson coming up March 5th, March 12th, Gorgeous Gary Young, March 19th, Matt Riviera. And then we've got some good stuff coming up in April. We've got Dan Murphy, Mitt Cards. We've got Jason Sanderson coming up in April. We are trying to work out an interview with the original Mr. Wonderful Rock Riddle, and David and I have been talking back and forth. We've got some other guests coming up that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. And I've I've run out of things to say. So uh, for David and myself and for Kevin, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is IHWE Radio, and we will see you next week. Good night, everybody.